This is a blown wear ring on a Sea-Doo Spark. Uh, you can see it's uh, going almost full throttle and doesn't even have enough speed to plane. Uh, this is just from excessive clearance uh, on the prop and the wear ring. So I'll show you what the uh, what the diagnosis is, but uh, this is how it looked. This was it uh, after I took it out, but you can see what was in there and why it was doing that. This is a video on how to replace the wear ring on a Sea-Doo Spark. I think this is 2017 and I've seen a couple of videos and I just did this uh, not too long ago. So these are the tools uh, you're going to need is a 13 millimeter. Uh, I just got the longest extension I can get with a swivel, a uh, quarter inch uh, head for the gear clamp, a uh, half inch, uh, 13 mil. You can use two 13s as well, a 10 millimeter wrench and adjustable. You could use a socket uh, on a ratchet as well and then work too. But that's all you need to do this job and it takes about half an hour or so so not very long if your unit has ibr you need to take this bolt uh this upper linkage bolt out and then uh, this bolt back here out uh, and uh this ibr unit slides off and i'm gonna have to hold on to that back uh, with the 13. so i'm gonna take that out and then uh, this uh, this ibr unit will drop out now you just pull that bolt out and this thing comes out want to be careful that you uh, don't lose that uh, nylock or that bushing sorry and there's a, a nylock uh, and a washer there so i'm just gonna grab that bushing before this okay so this is where some other people have differing opinions so some people like I, one video i saw where I took all this stuff off and you don't really need to do that you just need a really long extension so this 13 mil here well 13 mil head it's an 8 mil bolt there's one down in here, that one. And then this is the hardest one to get at and it's kind of right down in there. So you take those out and uh, you have to take this off. So, uh, and then that's, uh, that's, that's how you get at the uh, wear ring. Okay, so before I, t I've taken this off and now before I take those three bolts out of the back side here, I'm just going to remove this linkage and this is the, uh, it's six millimeter bolt, but it's a 10 mil head. So I'm just going to, let's just turn this. So, so now this has come out, we're just going to take these out. Okay. So this is why you need the swivel to, to get at that one. And, uh, this back one this one's the hardest here okay so that's the last bolt there so now okay so you can see this is the wear ring, it totally blew up. So, you can see it actually got pulled through here too. So. Mommy, we didn't suck up no rocks. Yeah, we did, buddy. So, no, we didn't, Dad. Yeah, that's, so can... that's what, uh, now there's this section, and this has the gasket on it, so you don't, uh, you don't want to. We don't got rocks on it in there. Yeah, there's rocks. So this is the gasket, so you wanna you don't wanna lose that. So this is the new wear ring. I had to peel this gasket off, um, and that gets wrapped around on here. Okay, so that has to go on there. Now this um i think the gap on these is about like five thou or so so it's pretty it's pretty tight the interference now one thing you're gonna have to do is this little uh, groove here lines up with this uh, i think this is a cooling intake so when you put all this together um that's what's going to index it so right here you can see This is the uh, this is where that's all gonna line up with. So I usually uh, this had other types of Loctite on there, but I just in the habit of putting um, the right size of Loctite on. So I just got some blue uh, 
thread locker for the bolts that don't have any C's. Okay, so this is the this is the tricky tricky one is trying to get anything here to line up. And you want to make sure that uh, that O-ring seats properly and it goes into the port on the pump. So I'm going to fight with this for uh, and try to get it all lined up nicely. Okay, so that's kind of with this, uh, this pipe one in here and uh, the spline all lined up. So that's kind of the trickiest part of the whole thing. And you just want to make sure that you feel that it's properly seated. And uh, yeah. Okay, so after a bit of messing around there, the easiest thing is to put those two bolts in and kind of hold it in when you're putting the, uh, putting the wear ring and the prop on, um, just because there's a few things to line up. This obviously has to get fed through. This is on the top. And uh, I usually don't just like to crank it tight. I'll kind of get it snug. Make sure you can hear it seated. It's firm. So you want to make sure you have uh, that uh, positive contact. Make sure you're not misaligned or anything. But it's definitely easier, I found, to put those two bolts in uh, rather than do it after. So make sure you uh, connect uh, connect this. This is tightened and pretty well. All that's left is the uh, IBR. So that piece I said don't lose is the piece that just skated across the floor. There are these bushings. There are these bushings in here, so you gotta be very careful with that. Usually those I put uh, a bit of Loctite on. So when you put this on, um, this has a little bushing in this linkage here. Um, and uh, you want to make sure that uh, it helps when you're steering straight. So straighten out the steering wheel. So just a couple tips. But that's pretty much it, how you uh, go about replacing these. This is a photo of another one I did where a rock was stuck in the prop and it wore the uh, wear ring out. This is the uh, most recent one. So it shouldn't look like that.